This is my favorite time of year. I really enjoy making my end of year top 10 videos. This is a great way to archive the best board games I've played throughout the year. My favorite thing to do, however, is to rewatch these videos later on and reminisce not only about my favorite board games played that year, but also I enjoy reminiscing about how life was going at that particular time. I like to think about how much has changed and how things are now. When I play board games, there's always something happening around me. These videos are perfect for capturing every moment that occurred, not only on the table, but also in life. I'm Solo Board Gaming Knight, and I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy my top 10 solo board games of 2023. I personally love and enjoy the gameplay and deck building of the Clank series, and Clank Catacombs is no different. It has an app that allows you to play a solo campaign, which is actually pretty good, and it has a little bit of replay value. The only thing I do want to warn is that I think this game is best if you're going to play not only solo, but with people as well. Because I don't think it's worth the price of admission just for the solo aspect. But if you're going to play it with friends and family, this is definitely a great clank game. The only downside I want to really say apart from that is that the game takes up a lot of space. And be warned, compared to clank in space, I think that that game is much easier to just contain on the table. This game requires a lot of space. But if you do have that space, I highly recommend Clank Catacombs. Super Skill Pinball Holiday Special is not only a great game to play this time of year, but it's actually a really surprisingly really good pinball game for the tabletop. Now, I'm a fan of pinball. I've been playing it since the 80s, and I actually have a pretty large collection in Zen Pinball of tables but this game actually captures the essence of pinball whether you're playing a christmas story a christmas vacation or elf it is very well done and very faithful to what pinball is in real life and really the simplicity is its charm you roll two dice choose one of the two dice to use as the destination in which your pinball is going to go fill that space in place your pinball there and you pretty much just rinse, repeat, and do it again. And what's really neat is that you could actually play missions that are specific to each table, making each table feel completely unique and different. Not only that, you could do things that you could do in real life, like skill shots, multi-ball, and even nudge the pinball. I find it really impressive how well the pinball experience was translated to board game form. It's not an expensive game, and at such a low risk, this is a no-brainer. I highly, highly recommend Super Skill Pinball Holiday Special. I had a love-hate relationship with Marvel Zombies. On one hand, it's a great-looking game with great gameplay and all-out fun. All the new mechanics that were introduced in this game were really well done with the hunger mechanics and going ravenous and the special abilities. All perfect. I, it's even fun fighting the heroes and actually being the anti-heroes, right? The thing is that I felt that content-wise, it was lacking. Not only that, you're able to get overwhelmed pretty quickly in this game. Without that extra content to be able to play things like hero mode, there's just things that I wish you could do that you just can't do yet, but it's coming. But even with all that said, Marvel Zombies is great fun, and if you're into dice chucking, I highly recommend that you check it out. I really was contemplating whether or not to add Descent, Legends of the Dark, The Betrayer's War to this list. Because technically, this is an expansion. 
But to me, I kind of felt like if it was a sequel, I feel that because so many things were updated. The way that the art looks, I love the way that the actual heroes feel like they progressed. The missions, the way that the new content is mixed with the old content, adding multi-layered levels to the actual dungeons that you explore. Yes, it's an expansion, but in a lot of ways, it just feels like a sequel to a game. That's how I felt anyways, and that's why I added it onto this list. Now, this is a game that pretty much got my channel started in the first place, so it has that special place in my heart. But apart from that, it's a solid game. It's a really well-made dungeon crawler that I personally enjoy. Some may not enjoy having to use the app, but personally, it's the experience that counts for me. And I feel that they pretty much fixed all the things that bothered me about the first act and made act two everything I wanted it to be. That's why I placed Descent Legends of the Dark, The Betrayer's War, on my list. Recklin Run released at the tail end of 2022. Anyone who's followed my channel knows how much I love Warp's Edge. It's a solo hero series, and the creator of that game created Recklin Run. This is set in a post-apocalyptic world in which you use scrap to upgrade your vehicle, battle other vehicles in this dice placement style combat, and I don't know how to say how good this game is because there's just so much to talk about that I recommend that you look into my review of Reckland Run so you get an idea of just why I enjoyed this game so much. This is a game that I've thought about constantly and I even have this huge desire to go back to it, start all over again with a new vehicle and just experience it all over again. If you're into solo only games and what you see here on the screen calls your attention in even the slightest way, you owe it to yourself to play Recklin Run. Sky Tear Horde came out of nowhere for me. Personally, it's the sleeper hit of the year for me. Now, I was skeptical because I have a lot of Marvel Champions and I was worried about adding another LCG to the mix. Apart from that, I wasn't sure how different it would be. I'm so glad I gave it a try because it really feels unique and nothing like Marvel Champions. I just love the way that the art on the cards look. Not only that, the deck construction of this game is bliss. It is so much fun. Unfortunately, I wish there was more, but I did back the Monolith campaign on, on GameFound because I, I fell in love with Sky Tear Horde so much, I just wanted more. When it comes to the gameplay, it's so much fun using your built-up mana to spend it on allies that can help you in the fight against the outsider. Uh, there's these minions that you're constantly having to deal with. There's this portal that is constantly adding new minions onto your field. And you have to destroy these portals to be able to get a hold of the outsider and defeat them. And you're trying to do all this while protecting your castle and hoping it doesn't get destroyed. Sky Tear Horde is a great game that goes on sale quite often. If you could find it, please give it a try. You won't regret it. Legendary Encounters The Matrix is perfect for someone like me. I absolutely loved The Matrix when it came out back in 1999. And although Reloaded and Revolutions didn't really meet my expectations, I still love the series. I just pretend that the new one doesn't exist. To be honest, a part of me was worried because I already have a lot of Legendary Marvel and I really, really enjoy that series. I have a lot for it, but I wanted to play something different. And this is different. Now, there are similarities, 
But this game plays nothing like Legendary Marvel, in my opinion at least. First of all, when an enemy is added onto the track, it's placed face down. See, you have to use your attack power to do what's called a scan. And depending where it is on the mat depends how much attack you have to use to reveal that enemy. The combat even plays in a completely different way. There's also objectives you actually going through the storyline of the movies. When you're in the real world, this is where you could spend your recruitment points to be able to recruit allies and add them to your deck. You can also purchase hovercrafts to help you along the way as well. While in the Matrix, this is when you're able to do things like scan the enemy line to reveal who's behind the card. On top of that, this is where the combat also takes place. There's some surprises there too that I'll let you figure out on your own. If you're a fan of Matrix, Legendary Encounters The Matrix is definitely something you have to add to your collection. I took a gamble with Marvel Dagger. I hadn't heard the best things about it, so I was very skeptical on whether or not I should get it. But in a lot of ways, I'm so glad I did because I truly enjoyed it. After hearing some negative things about it, I didn't think that was going to be the case. But it was highly enjoyable for me. I don't like the way the map looks sometimes. It is colorful and it's bright, but it doesn't look like a lot's going on until you put things on it. But when it comes to all the heroes you could choose from, their aspects that really change how you play and what could be done on the board, there's a lot going on here. And the way you play your abilities one at a time and everyone, all the heroes take their turns and then the nemesis go is really addicting. And turns start to speed up really quick. Playing one ability, doing something on the board. Next hero, playing another ability, getting a final showdown with the nemesis, which each nemesis is going to have their own unique feel. You're going to have to strategize completely different from nemesis to nemesis. You're not going to be able to play the game exactly the same way all the time. And with so many heroes, so many aspects and the nemesis that you can fight against, Marvel Dagger really brought a lot of fun to the table. And I think you should at least play it to check it out for yourself. Tales from the Red Dragon Inn was almost my number one. It's another dungeon crawler. It's not complex, but it's really a well-made board game. It's things like the initiative, the way you draw the initiative from the bag and just start playing your actions depending on how many tokens you have and activating your abilities. It's very simple, but it's very fun at the same time. The scenarios that you're placed in, the way that the actions and the abilities are handled is just fun. And when it comes to attacking, you will never miss an enemy. You'll hit them at least once, no matter what. And if you roll a crit, you're able to roll the dice again and maybe, just maybe, knock an enemy out in one blow. You even have a chance of adding dice to what's called an epic pool in which it's going to protect you from either an attack from the enemy or even empower your attacks to cause extra damage. Rolling dice to determine how the enemy is going to react during the round is ingenious. Activating them depending on which order they stand is really simple and really takes away from that cluster of always having to think about how they're going to move. Then, when you look at the player's abilities, there's actions that they could take that are either on cooldown or limited or sometimes unlimited. But the thing is, so many of these actions, I want to say there's not a bad action here. They're all fun to do and it's just enjoyable. Then there's the progression that after the end of every chapter, you get to add cool things to your deck. There's five chapters in total and one thing that really stands out is the bond that these characters have. This is a well-written and funny script. I highly enjoyed reading through this adventure.
My biggest gripe with this game is the amount of tokens that it has. I had to place it in an art box because there's no way that I'm going to fill this box with so many baggies. The thing is that I'm not showing you exactly how many tokens there are. There's much more than what you see here. However, that does not take away from how great Tales from the Red Dragon Inn is. I implore you, if you like dungeon crawlers, search for this board game and add it to your collection. You're going to love it. Those that have been around this channel for a while know that I'm a big fan of Chip Theory games. And once again, they have knocked it out of the park with Hoplomachus Victorum. I'm going to be honest and fair right off the bat. This game may not be for you. It's very complex. There's a lot going on and it's incredibly time consuming. However, if you are up for the challenge and you're able to maybe even keep the game on a table and just keep coming back to it every night, you are in for a solo board gaming masterpiece. This is a treat. It's really difficult for me to put in words in a short amount of time the reasons why this game is and how it works. But please, I ask that you look for my review and watch it so you get a good idea if you're interested to see what the game is about. You're a gladiator taking part in gladiatorial battles and even sports, leveling up your character, leveling up your, your attack dice, your units. So much is going on in this game. And you're going through this campaign trying to defeat the ultimate baddie. But let me say that the journey there is unlike anything I've played in quite a while. And it truly does feel epic. I, the word masterpiece comes to my mind a lot when I think about Hoplomachus Victorum. Once again, this may not be a game for you, but please look uh, at some videos and watch my review to see if this is something you're interested in. However, if you are a Chip Theory Games fan and you've liked their previous work, you owe it to yourself to give Hoplomachus Victorum a, a, a try because I really think that this is one of the best solo board gaming experiences any solo board gamer can have. If you're up for the challenge, I Highly recommend Hoplomachus Victorum. Well, that's it. Another year down for the books. I can't believe that 2023 has come and gone. It feels like just the other day that I was making my top 10 of 2022. But you know what? 2023 had a lot of great board games. I wasn't able to make a lot of videos this year. But even though that was the case, a lot of great board games still got played. I'm kind of happy that the reviews that I had in the pipeline, all the footage that was recorded for them, didn't go to waste and made their way to this video. So you all got to see it either way, and I'm happy about that. I want to say thank you guys for hanging out with me, for taking the time to watch this video. I wasn't able to release a lot of videos this year, but thank you for all your support, always being there for me, hanging out. It's always a good time, and I'm really grateful for that. This was Solo Board Gaming Night. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you and everyone else has a great game night. Take care, Solo Knights.